Hello, I'm Kyle Knox. I am from the Hopi and Alkamel Atam Pipash peoples in Arizona. I'm an enrolled member of the Gila River Indian community in Southern Arizona, located outside of Phoenix, Arizona. Hi, my name is Eliana Anton Rhodes. I'm 17. I'm a student living in the Gila River Indian community in Arizona, and you're watching Youth Action Hour. To me, Native American Heritage Month represents a uh, good opportunity for uh, Native peoples all across the nation to uh, have a little more exposure as to not only the plights, but some of our history, as well as developing programming that can help bring a little more presence of our contributions to the country, as well as to our communities locally. Uh, some of the things you'll see are uh, special program nights at sporting events where uh, you know, creation of jerseys or commemorative t-shirts are created for everybody in attendance. I think those are a good way to, uh, you know, bring a little more exposure, as I mentioned, to uh, the Native peoples and the things that we do as a uh, demographic and our contributions to the uh, communities that we comprise. Another thing you'll find is that this month also provides a lot more programming that will give us an opportunity to share a lot of ourselves in terms of our art. You know, you see a lot of programming on TV where we have a lot more of our shows that are being shown, um, you know, special tabs within um, streaming platforms that are really good to see as well. So this is a really good opportunity for us to share a lot more of, uh, you know, who we are and what we're able to still accomplish. I feel Native American Heritage Month is a good start for Indigenous people and Indigenous youth to use their voices and show where they come from. A part of me also feels like it's a pity, especially since it is during Thanksgiving. And I say that because a lot of people sugarcoat Thanksgiving. They make it something that is totally not and whitewash it for textbooks and their purposes. It is good to see a lot of Native people taking advantage of this month though with the recognition we're finally getting after all these years. So all in all, I think Native American Heritage Month does provide an optimal opportunity for those who are not Native to learn more about ourselves uh, during this month, whether that's through uh, more awareness, uh, through better history lessons or things of that sort. I think it's a really good opportunity to learn more about all of us as Native peoples across this country. I've always been interested in art since probably about preschool. I didn't start taking it seriously until I was about 14. And then I didn't really start showing it off until I was maybe 16, so about a year ago. This particular piece I titled Prior to Colonization. It shows an Otham woman in her traditional wear prior to colonization. Traditionally, Otham women only wore skirts and a bare chest and we always showed off our shells. What led me to create this particular piece is I noticed that nobody really shows how we used to dress back then. Like they always show us in our old style wrap skirts, so I really wanted to showcase that in my painting. I've never done a painting with an Otham woman in her bare chest. I've always done it with her covered up, so I think it was finally time to show that in one of my art pieces. This is important to me as a Native youth artist because I feel not a lot of people show it because they think it's taboo in colonial culture. I feel we should represent and be proud of where we come from, how our ancestors walked this earth before all that. So for myself, I am a videographer and a photographer, and a lot of my work uh, encompasses uh, the people that I represent, which are the Hopi and the Akamel Atam and the Peeposh. So a lot of the work that I do is kind of uh, documentarian in a way in that I'm capturing a lot of activities, whether they're cultural or historical uh, events uh, within my communities and my reservations and my people uh, that are uh, worthwhile. What I try to do is document them and share them with as many people as I can because I think that as a person like myself, uh, growing up as an urban uh, native as they call them. I have a lot of uh, peers that are non-native so I serve almost as a intermediary or as a liaison to share this with people at large which has been really great. A lot of the stuff that I share is really good for native peoples to learn about but it's also even better when I have my non-native peers see what I'm able to post and share and they ask questions. Um, sometimes people can get offended when people ask, you know, what does this mean? Why are they holding baskets? Or what does that dance represent? Um, but I look at to that as a teachable moment. So for me, uh, when I can share these things, I'm always willing to share as much as I can in a respectful manner, as long as the questions are um, posed in a respectful manner as well, so that it's teachable for them. And it's also helpful for them to uh, share that with their peers to let them know what the native peoples of Arizona uh, look like, you know, how they dance, how they talk, how they sing, things of that sort. So it's also helpful for me to share this with native peoples across the country too, because uh, in a day and age like today, when
when we see a lot of the same dances happening, the depictions of our peoples often look similar, and that's usually in the form of powwow dancers. And so uh, it's helpful for me, and I take that as a stance to show what our people really look like as an identity from fashion, the way that we wear our regalia, our traditional clothing, our traditional songs, etc. So um, telling that history through photography is uh, one of the things that I'm really passionate about doing. Uh, there's a specific project that I'm currently engaged in and it has to do with the pre-colonial uh, depiction of the Akamel Atom or as it's been known as the Pima people within the region of the Gila River Indian community and Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community as well. I'm really trying to depict what our peoples look like pre-colonial, meaning pre-contact, pre-European contact to be specific. The reason why it's so important to me to do this is we oftentimes see pictures of our people in traditional clothing or in traditional stances that were relegated to black and white and they were taken from ethnographers, people studying our people, um, outsiders. And so I'm taking a unique approach where it's me as a community member of the people taking these photos. You can say that they're staged, which in a way they are for sure, but it's really not a recreation, but it's showing what our peoples look like pre-contact. It's a way of observing our peoples in a way that, you know, can bring pride, but also show how simple we were as a people. Simple and not in a bad way, but kind of goes back to the idea of, you know, our ancestors did more with less. And they uh, really paved the way for the foundation of the city of Phoenix. They constructed monuments that are located within the state of Arizona and abroad. The only way I felt like I could really show that in a way that was somewhat a testament to that was how simple we even dress. So through the medium of fashion, we're able to show what our people look like while still understanding that they were able to accomplish a lot. We are all unique peoples. We all look different. We talk different. We're our own nation states as tribal entities. And so we should do our best to be authentic in how our people look and honor that by, you know, recognizing how we look and trying to capture that, whether it's my own um, native peoples, my brothers and sisters, indigenous peoples abroad, if they can look at that and ask themselves, you know, how did my people look like before contact, before we started uh, wearing what we see nowadays, which are more modern clothes. The inspiration from my youth, Eliana Antone, who represents a youth demographic who are very hungry to see depictions like this, whether it's in other art forms like painting, etc but uh, there is a need for it. And so I thought we should create these works. And so that's where I took that lead and have been moving forward in the progress of this specific project. For this particular project, it, it looks like it's going to get a public release and uh, gallery viewing in June, 2022. If anybody wants to reach out to me, you can do so by emailing me at ksnox at gmail.com. Or you can also find me on Instagram at the intro do to see any updates about my work as well as some of uh, my portraits and photos that I post regularly on there. Thank you for watching. To learn more about Native American Heritage Month and Youth Indigenous Art, go to youthactionhour.org.